This presentation will introduce you to the Blue Shield organisation, working to protect heritage in crisis. One of the criticisms of the Blue Shield, and other heritage experts and organisations who try to protect heritage sites and artefacts during armed conflict or following natural and human-made disaster, is that we are prioritising old things over living people who are often in extreme danger. We must make it completely clear to everyone from the outset that the Blue Shield would never prioritise or ask anyone else to prioritise protecting heritage before protecting people. However, what we do argue is that the protection of heritage is an integral part of protecting individuals and communities. The destruction of cultural heritage has been a feature of armed conflict for thousands of years. Although proponents of heritage protection during armed conflict are often criticised for their apparent disregard for human life, there is a long established link between the destruction of heritage and attacks on communities. The German playwright Heinrich Hein wrote in 1821, where they burn books, they will, in the end, burn human beings too. Hein was writing about the persecution of Muslims in Spain during the Spanish Inquisition that was attempting to purify the country and make it a wholly Roman Catholic population. Hein's sentiment was echoed more than a hundred years later by Raphael Lemkin, a Polish concentration camp survivor who helped to draft the Genocide Convention. In 1948, he wrote, Burning books is not the same as burning bodies, but when one intervenes against mass destruction of churches and books, one arrives just in time to prevent the burning of bodies. The Blue Shield always puts the needs of people before the protection of cultural property. However, we firmly believe that cultural heritage is inseparable from people, as it is people who make and use cultural property and who give it value and whose identities are expressed through it. The Blue Shield's work is founded on the belief that cultural heritage, tangible and intangible, is a vital expression of the culture that makes up unique communities and its loss during conflict and disaster can be catastrophic. The Blue Shield is an NGO dedicated to the protection of heritage from conflicts and disasters. It comprises national committees and an international board elected by all the national committees called the Blue Shield International or BSI board. The Blue Shield is named after the emblem identified in the 1954 Hague Convention for the protection of cultural property in the event of armed conflict to identify cultural property protected under the Convention. In order to protect endangered cultural heritage, the International Committee of the Blue Shield was created in 1996 by the four non-governmental organisations which represent professionals active in the fields of archives, libraries, monuments and sites and museums. These are the ICA, the International Council on Archives, ICOM, the International Council of Museums, IFLA, the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, and ICOMOS, the International Council on Monuments and Sites. The four organisations work together to prepare for and respond to emergency situations that could affect cultural heritage. By the time the second protocol to the Hague Convention was written in 1999, the ICBS was named in it as a recognised advisory body to the UNESCO Intergovernmental Committee for Cultural Property Protection in Armed Conflict. By 2000, some countries were forming national committees of the Blue Shield, and in 2008, the Association of National Committees of the Blue Shield, ANCBS, was established to coordinate the work of the national committees. In 2016, ICBS and ANCBS amalgamated to become simply the Blue Shield, adopting a new logo based on the emblem of the convention as a symbol of their protective work, but set in a blue circular background to symbolise the wider remit of their work. The acronyms ICBS and ANCBS are no longer used. The Blue Shield has 25 national committees around the world, with a number of others under construction or considering construction, these national committees are coordinated and supported by the Blue Shield International Board. The Blue Shield's mission states that it is 
committed to the protection of the world's cultural property and is concerned with the protection of cultural and natural heritage, tangible and intangible, in the event of conflict, natural or human-made disaster. Article 2.1, 2016 Statutes. Our primary context is the 1954 Hague Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in the Event of Armed Conflict and its two protocols of 1954 and 1999, which are considered to be part of International Humanitarian Law, or IHL. IHL, also known as the Law of War or Law of Armed Conflict, is a set of rules which seek, for humanitarian reasons, to limit the effects of armed conflict on people and property. However, this primary context is also informed by a number of other international legal instruments, such as the International Cultural Protection Agenda set by the UN and UNESCO, and by international initiatives regarding environmental disaster, such as the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. As well as working towards cultural property protection during conflict, the Blue Shield also works to promote proactive heritage protection before conflict, as stipulated in the 1954 Hague Convention, during the post-conflict period, for example when stabilisation troops may be deployed, during natural and environmental disasters. The image on the slide shows the collapse of the Köln City Archives in 2009, which contains 65,000 documents. An international Blue Shield team went to Köln to support the rescue work. We also work when destruction occurs outside official armed conflict. For example, the Bamiyan Buddhas were destroyed outside a period of official armed conflict. And we work to tackle looting and the ensuing illicit trafficking that can occur during armed conflicts and periods of unrest or lack of security. In addition, although the 1954 Hague Convention and its two protocols refer to cultural property, recognising the developments in our understanding of culture across the world and the different ways it manifests, the Blue Shield deals with the broader concept of cultural heritage. Our work covers libraries, archives, buildings, museums and galleries, heritage sites and landscapes, and intangible heritage. The Blue Shield upholds a number of ethical principles. Joint action. The Blue Shield seeks to share information and knowledge with international partners from both heritage and non-heritage areas, as well as government bodies, in order to coordinate and mobilise cross-sectorial joint actions that will better protect cultural heritage. The complex emergency situations in which the Blue Shield might operate requires close collaboration between the cultural heritage sector, international and national government agencies, armed forces and other uniform services, and other NGOs. To be effective, this partnership should be established long before any emergency, complex or otherwise, begins. In order for this to happen, everyone involved must work together to educate and train their members for their potential roles in both armed conflicts, where they have particular legal responsibilities, and environmental disaster, where they are frequently called upon to help as first responders following disasters. Independence. The Blue Shield is a self-governed, non-profit and non-governmental organisation operating independently on all matters of its mission. It provides its own expertise and seeks to work with partners in order to share information and coordinate joint actions. Neutrality. The Blue Shield is a neutral organisation. Our mission is the protection of heritage. Blue Shield may not take sides in hostilities or engage at any time in controversies of a political, racial, religious or ideological nature. It maintains autonomy in order to always act according to its principles and its mission. As such, we will try to assist any genuine initiative by any nation state or warring faction to work towards this goal. It is not the place of the Blue Shield to assess the status of the conflict or to pass a moral judgment on its conduct. The same principle applies during complex or other emergencies. The Blue Shield respects the principles of international humanitarian law under which we operate and we encourage others to do likewise. Professionalism. The Blue Shield gathers and collaborates with experts from professional bodies. It ensures that its experts provide the necessary experience and knowledge that is required for preparedness for and response to crises. 
Therefore, it aims to train experts and develop their skills to better act before, during and after disasters. Respect for cultural identity. The Blue Shield respects the cultural identity of all humankind and seeks to protect all cultural heritage without bias. Work on a not-for-profit basis. The Blue Shield and its members are not seeking profit. Work should be conducted either on a voluntary basis or on a not-for-profit basis. The Blue Shield is often described as the cultural equivalent of the Red Cross. However, unlike the Red Cross, the Blue Shield is almost entirely composed of volunteers. It has just two paid staff in its secretariat, one of whom is part-time. These posts are both funded by Newcastle University in the United Kingdom, who actively support Blue Shield International and the wider Blue Shield network. There is no standard composition of a National Blue Shield Committee, but an ideal membership would include heritage professionals, for example, members of ICA, IFLA, ICOM and ICOMOS, those working in museums and on sites, cultural property lawyers, representatives from national UNESCO commissions, members of the armed forces and government, such as representatives of ministries of defence and culture, members of civil protection agencies and emergency responders, advisors from other bodies, such as national committees of the Red Cross and Red Crescent, and academic experts. Together, these institutions work to ensure all types of heritage are represented by Blue Shield committees and protected in conflict and disaster. The Blue Shield International Board is composed of nominated representatives from the ICA, ICOM, ICOMOS and IFLA, and four members elected from national committees, as well as an elected president. They are re-elected at the Blue Shield General Assembly, held once every three years. In carrying out its work with the armed forces, the Blue Shield sits alongside other humanitarian actors. For example, staff from Blue Shield International sit alongside the International Committee of the Red Cross, the UN High Commission for Refugees, the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, Save the Children and others on NATO exercises, whilst national committees work alongside national branches and work with national civil protection agencies and emergency responders. These committees aim to sit between governments and their armed forces, bringing the expertise of the heritage community to advise government and support cultural property protection laws and policies, and to support military activity, bringing greater depth to military decision-making, to enable proactive protection of heritage before disaster occurs. The BSI Board has identified six areas of activity in which Blue Shield International and national committees should work. Each national committee has the flexibility within this framework to prioritise activity under these headings. So, for example, a number of national committees prioritise working with the military and other emergency agencies regarding cultural property protection following natural disaster, rather than in the event of armed conflict. These areas of activity are realised in the following contexts contributing to the development and delivery of plans and actions for proactive planning, emergency response, stabilisation, post-disaster recovery and long-term or ongoing support activities, coordinating support with or to affected national committees from the international community as requested, promoting and developing understanding of the international laws which underpin the Blue Shield's work, interpreted within the framework of the laws of armed conflict, as well as international initiatives regarding environmental disaster, such as the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, contributing to the development of policies in relation to international cultural protection agendas and promoting their implementation, developing policy for the Blue Shield Association and promoting its implementation, working with partners to support capacity building activities and develop and deliver education and training materials and courses in support of the Blue Shield's areas of activity. Coordinating the work of the Blue Shield committees and their members and work with international and national partners. The Blue Shield does not work in isolation and partners include UNESCO, ICA, ICOM, ICOMOS, IFLA and other national and international heritage organisations. NATO and other multinational forces and national armed forces and other organisations involved in cultural property protection, such as government departments, 
National Ministers of Defence and Emergency Response Unit. The Blue Shield International Board realises these areas of activity in international contexts, whilst national committees realise these activities in their home countries. The Blue Shield promotes a risk mitigation approach to cultural property protection. We've identified the following key risks. Lack of planning. If cultural property protection is not identified as an issue either before an armed conflict or when prioritising activity following an environmental disaster, no resources will be allocated to it. No preparations will be made for its protection by politicians or by planners in ministries of culture, such as practising emergency evacuation in museums or in defence. No military unit will be allocated any responsibility for it. This may lead to situations where cultural property is damaged, destroyed or looted. Lack of military awareness. A considerable amount of heritage has been damaged and destroyed by fighting simply because the armed forces were not aware of it or of its importance. Collateral and accidental damage. It has frequently been suggested that most cultural property is destroyed during conflict through collateral damage. The unintentional or incidental damage affecting facilities, equipment or personnel that are not justifiable military objectives. Or accidental damage. The unintentional or incidental damage affecting facilities, equipment or personnel. That is, it was not the actual target, but damage is expected as a result of an attack on something nearby that was the actual target. Or damage was entirely unintended, such as a bomb going astray. Shrapnel scarring on buildings, for example, is a common example of collateral damage if the target was not the building itself, but perhaps something nearby. On the other hand, aiming at a building in order to target those inside is deliberate damage, as the building is targeted in order to reach the people. Cultural property can be deliberately targeted for two main reasons. Put very simply, a site may be deliberately targeted if it has become a military objective, for example, if a military headquarters is located in it. Of course, just because it is a legitimate target, this does not mean it will be targeted. The second type of deliberate targeting is when it occurs for no clear military gain. The shelling of the World Heritage Site of Dubrovnik and the burning of the Sarajevo Library, or the deliberate demolition of Palmyra, are high profile cases of the almost endemic specific targeting of cultural property in conflict. This type of targeting is often associated with wider campaigns of ethnic cleansing and genocide. Looting is often regarded as an unfortunate side effect of armed conflict and environmental disaster, but it can cause extensive damage in its own right. History is littered with examples of victorious armies removing the cultural property of the enemy they've just defeated as spoils of war, which is today known as pillage, that is, looting by armies rather than civilians. At one time, it was common practice for armies to pay their troops in this way. More commonly, conflict or environmental disaster often lead to a breakdown in social order and the absence of effective law enforcement agencies, together with unemployment and economic hardship. Any of these circumstances can cause people to turn to theft and looting. Sometimes this is done on an individual ad hoc basis. At other times, it can become part of deliberate, systemic, and sometimes targeted activity, looting by organised criminal organisations feeding the illicit international art market and using the money to support organised crime. Some sites are damaged by their deliberate use and reuse. Although at first glance this may seem to be an issue of awareness, in many cases those occupying sites are only too aware of their historic importance. The deliberate military use of sites encompasses the digging of fortifications and trenches, new military buildings and the planting of landmines. Sometimes sites are also reused by desperate refugees looking for shelter. This reuse frequently heavily damages sites. Another threat which is often forgotten is the consequences of neglect. During conflict and following environmental disaster, Staff may not be able to access archives, historic buildings, libraries, museums or sites, disrupting essential routine maintenance. Historic documents, books, objects, buildings and sites need constant maintenance and without such care can rapidly deteriorate. Delicate archives, books and museum objects also need to be kept in precise environmental conditions 
that are frequently interrupted by conflict or environmental disaster. Others require treatment by chemicals that are often impossible to obtain. Emergency storage or refuges for objects often lack the needed environmental conditions. In some places, cultural property is not seen as important or the staff lack relevant training. So its maintenance, conservation and cataloguing may have been neglected in peacetime, compounding the problems experienced during armed conflict or environmental disaster. Heritage is also often lost or damaged in conflict as a consequence of development. This can include new buildings and the associated infrastructure like pipes and electricity, agricultural expansion and roads. The loss of heritage from illegal development is also a common problem in peacetime, but during conflict, the staff charged with protecting sites, whether heritage staff or law enforcement, are frequently unable to access sites to enforce protection. As a result, the destruction of sites to build new houses or increase the size of fields can become a major problem, particularly at significant sites that may otherwise have been well protected. Whilst the new buildings can be removed, the demolition cannot be undone. Stone robbing is also a problem as those in need of building materials take the cut stone from existing historic buildings. The rapid destruction of towns, whether from conflict or natural disaster, also leads to rapid redevelopment, where the urgent need to provide shelter for those who live there and to restart the economy frequently overrides the need to consider heritage, which requires slow, careful and expensive rebuilding. Understanding these risks can allow the development of measures to mitigate them. A key area for the Blue Shield is to provide exercise support and training for armed forces and heritage professionals in cultural property protection. Our training is founded in the principles of the 1954 Hague Convention, which remain equally valid in situations not directly related to armed conflict, such as peacekeeping deployments or disasters. These principles may require training and will certainly need rehearsing, as in the event of an armed conflict, there may not be time to learn them for the first time and discover, for example, that you have no trucks to take objects to a refuge. Blue Shield promotes cultural property protection training measures that support military planning. We have built these principles into a number of policy areas, such as the four-tier approach. Delivery of effective cultural property protection requires a partnership between the Blue Shield, Armed Forces and others engaged in the mitigation of armed conflict and natural disaster at four different times. Long term, the integration of cultural property protection within basic training for all military and other relevant personnel at an appropriate level. Immediately before deployment, where partners need an understanding of the specific cultural property they will encounter in a particular location. During conflict, where armed forces need to have the capability and capacity to take legally informed decisions regarding cultural property protection. And during post-conflict and natural disaster stabilisation, where the military may be the only organisation capable of, for example, stabilising buildings or protecting collections. The 1954 Hague Convention calls on states parties to conduct preparations for conflict, a requirement for heritage managers, governments and armed forces. A key feature of the Blue Shield's approach to training, particularly long-term cultural property protection training, is to work with all those involved in heritage protection to develop partnerships between armed forces and heritage professionals so that all parties are able to learn about the working methods and constraints the others operate under, to build deeper relationships and to gain greater understanding of how each could support the other in an armed conflict or disaster to better protect heritage. These are some of our short, medium and long-term goals. We would like a central office with permanent staff. This would allow us to continue to influence politicians, international agencies, the military and armed non-state actors or ANSAs, to support national committees and to promote a coherent, effective message that cultural property protection is not a distraction but a responsibility. We aim for all states parties to the 1954 convention to have a national committee of the Blue Shield, for all countries to ratify and to implement the 1954 Hague Convention and its protocols 
to continue to promote and develop an integrated approach with uniform service partners and to ultimately realise the goal of becoming the cultural equivalent of the Red Cross or Red Crescent. They are very ambitious, but we will deliver on them in the future.